All right, I haven't recorded all this week, but it's been a pretty good week. Really quick, I just wanted to go over something about Toon Tanks. So I'm finishing it up. I decided it's been nice to see the great overview and I'm very happy with my decision to not follow along. In this lecture, the instructor has been going over the widget menu and he's been creating all these notes. And it's making sense as to what he's doing. I can definitely see what's happening with all the different nodes. I won't understand it until I do it myself. But if I was trying to just follow along with what he was doing, I would not be learning anything. It's just at that point where I'm not getting anything by copying everything over, but I am getting something by watching it while cleaning my room. So I've been watching these videos and it's like, if this isn't a good way to teach coding, then what is, right? And I'm thinking, well, by applying to your own project. So I'm, I've always wanted to make my own like, AP Computer Science A course, which is kind of a separate thing, but I feel like if I did a course on how to use Unity or Unreal or how to code in Java, it would be fascinating to see how a curriculum might work where you outline the project that you're working on throughout the course, for example, the game Toon Tanks, at the start of the lecture, and then you ask the viewer or the learner to come up with their own project. For my Agile development class this semester, we're learning about the Agile framework and we're learning JavaScript in many ways, but we're creating our own apps essentially throughout the class. So I'm curious, you know, in Toon Tanks, if this is a third person game, we're going to be going over winning and losing in the game mode, how to shoot things and create particles. So it's kind of like, you know, create your own idea that incorporates all of these things. And that way, when you finish a lecture or a few lectures that does all the game mode stuff, you try and figure that out yourself. And then it also incorporates it also asks you to use the docs. I don't know, it, it's a weird middle ground, but I, I'm curious on if anyone has any thoughts on that style of teaching, if it's been done before, question mark? Because right now it's follow along with me and do a challenge for this game, but I don't know. It's I think it's an interesting idea and I just wanted to verbalize it for a moment because I feel like the courses that I've taken, especially for programming, when it's something that you want to create, something you want to do, it's so important that you don't just follow along with the code. But for a Minecraft plugin, you use a different event so that you understand how all the events work. All right, so final verdict on this stuff. All in all, it's it's more of a code along than a lecture. I mean, some of the challengers are literally like add a variable or add a line after he's done 95% of the code or the blueprint stuff, but that's not really a bad thing in many ways, but it's most certainly not what I need at this point. I definitely, you know, don't, don't get me wrong here. There are definitely things that I learned doing the building escape one that I, have not learned in two tanks by because I never did it, right? You know, the challenges don't really become great until the end where they're like, you know, now modify the mechanics on your own. But yeah, the lectures, they just code alongs. And I think that's the best thing I can think about when explaining them. And that's the flaw with so many programming lessons. These game dev TV courses are not bad. The code along just isn't what I need. I did these for one purpose and that was to make Unreal less of an unknown and it it worked. I have a better intuition and don't get me wrong, there's no way that I could go back and just all of a sudden recode Toon Tanks. I don't think I could if I coded along anyway, but it's been helpful in giving me an intuition such as, you know, someone left a comment about using blueprints. Chances are, and I don't know this, I guess, but if I had just gone through the docs, I only know what I know. And so at my direction, I would have been directed in what I'm trying to do. But now I know that for blueprint widgets, I can edit them by making them an is variable check or whatever. Even if I don't remember, which I won't, where things are, I know that they exist. And now Unreal is less of a black box to me, right? I created the third person project and now I know where to go. I know to bring an asset in. I know how to set up the player controller. And if I remember properly or use the docs, I have the right search terms to find things. Setting up attachments in Unreal. What attachments can this take? I have that idea and that's what I set out to get with these courses and I still got that by watching these. So that being said, I am still gonna watch the simple shooter. Maybe I'll selectively go through it, but I know that, you know, controller aiming, third person camera spring arm, I mentioned this in the last week's devlog, but um, animation to gameplay, those are all things that are a mystery to me still. So it'll be good to just have that view. But yeah, I'll just take my own idea uh, that I just had, I guess, and see as Simple Shooter goes, how can I apply these to Seashell? So in terms of this course, if I just watch it, Simple Shooter should definitely be able to get done by the end of next week. And I should be able to walk around in Seashell. I'm gonna make a really basic model. I think I'm gonna take the iterative route on the art and stuff. Sim similar to Stardew Valley, or at least this is always what I think about, where Eric Barone just, or Concerned Ape, made the same sprites over and over and over again and iteratively got better. So yeah, that's Toon Tanks done. I gotta check that off.
tell me and I'll forget, show me and I'll know, let me experience and I'll understand. Um, I don't think the course's code longs would ever get beyond show though. Uh, except for those that mega challenge at the end, you now have this framework of a game, go edit the mechanics, that's how you really learn them. But yeah, I will talk more about the goals for next week and what the prototype will contain a little later tonight. Most of the devlog stuff's been done today simply because it's been a very busy week and lack of direction again a little bit, but I'm feeling pretty good. Back on my feet, I don't know how certain that is. Today is the fifth and then we have two weeks to make a prototype. What that prototype will contain, that's what we'll get to next. So, all right, and we're back. So, <laughs> uh, I've organized the Trello board quite a bit, so a lot of this is gonna be looking at Trello once more, but all in all, it'll be making promises for the next two weeks and seeing if I can deliver. Moving my hood up, getting the last of the natural light, but maybe that'll help, we'll see. So, I took some tips from my Agile software development class, uh, one of which was to simplify my Trello board, as well as define tasks and spikes. So all in all, a spike is something you can't estimate the time for, which technically is all of these things. It's something that won't be done in one block, because ideally, when you move something from the backlog to a to-do task, you can do it in a, in a work day, right? All right, so I pretty much sat down and thought about everything that would come up in the game. So, okay, the first thing is the menu screen, boom, we make a menu screen. Okay, you click, we'll just do play for now. What's supposed to happen? There's a girl running around a room. Okay, I need a room, I need the, the player model, I need the feature of running around the room, and so on and so forth. So, that, that thinking process out of the way, the next thing that I said was what level of detail do I want to go for here? My key idea is to get the simple things out of the way. So every asset of the game, the models and stuff will be very simple. Every asset's going to be very simple and the gameplay itself is going to be almost non-existent. In other words, as we go through, I'll explain more about this, but for the prototype on the 19th, I just want you play the game and you teleport. That's missing the dialogue, potential interaction with objects, yada, yada, yada. So I figure over the next few months, I wanna say like two or three months, I focus on learning how narrative dialogue boxes work. I focus on writing the narrative and then I focus on building better assets. So constantly iterating the same assets over and over again. Again, a lot of promises, but this is sort of a, a documentation, right? A, a development log of what I'm working on so I can look back and see have I succeeded by my measurement of success. In other words, I'm creating a skeleton in the next two weeks and then I pack on the meat and the tendons and the ligaments and the organs. You get it. Coming into Trello, the spike here, simple shooter. I'll watch a little bit here and there, but it's not really my main priority. Everything else is in order. So we have main menu, uh, wonderful. Something to do with widgets. Uh, that's why it's an implement thing. If it's got an implement tag, it's something to do with Unreal Engine. So this will be done in Unreal Engine the main menu setting, I guess. First floor environment model, as we have currently. I definitely wanna flesh out the rest of the rooms, sort of, I don't really know, my kitchen is checked off, but and you know, add some more items in. Then we have the girl. I wanna do some actual sketches. I don't know what I'm gonna do for poly count, maybe make a low poly sketch, maybe it'll just be a base shape model as I've outlined in girl model and rig. Base shape character, and base shapes are just like spheres, cylinders, uh, cubes. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Making a running animation. I have no idea how to implement this. If you go into Unreal and make a third person project, which I've done, they have a player character there that automatically runs. So I'm hoping I'll A, be exposed to that in the simple shooter and B, be able to read about that in the docs and then bring it into Unreal. Misc items around the house. I figure I can sit down and make a few just normal asset items to both practice my modeling because I think, you know, if I make a hundred models, right, which is probably way too high of a number, but cups, plates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, my first thing that I make is gonna be so much worse than my last. So the idea for these MISC items is to just make a bunch of things, stuff, animals, a carpet, a couch, just keep going, keep iterating, make a massive quantity of these things to rapidly accelerate that skill there. A girl running around house, this is again an implement thing that I'm gonna do once all of these are done. Hopefully you kind of see what my workflow is, is build up the base things I need to import into Unreal, then implement the base action that I wanna take. This doesn't involve picking items up, finding the seashell or anything, it's just moving the player around and making sure they don't fall through the floor. So then we move on a little bit. Back to narrative element. Island description and specific loop. So what do I want going on here? I need to think about the narrative. We'll have the sketches and design, so maybe a top-down thing. I have this very vague image in my mind. Environment sketches are gonna be interesting. Maybe revisit this Blender environment course that I have. Kind of in what I just talked about, I think I could go through that course and then apply what I've learned in in these things. For example, if they go over texture mapping, I can apply it on my own to the seashell island. So do this alongside that blender environment course that you have on Udemy. I think that's actually a really good idea. Carlos sketches. Where's our boy Carlos? This is Carlos, our inspiration for Carlos at least. Um, I don't think Squishmallow can sue me for making my character named Carlos, but if they do, we'll change the name. 
But yeah, then we have implementation of transporting, transporting, of transporting to the island level. And so that is, involves the girl. So the girl goes to pick up the seashell and it triggers this event. And then Carlos greeting. The end of the prototype is going to be Carlos saying like, oh, hey, you've awoken. Yeah, something like that, right? Quick note, I changed my sprint to the end of the sprint. So by March 19th is when I hope to have all this done. And what, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move. So main menu, everything up. None of these have scroll bars. Magnificent. Whew. This is it. So yeah, I'll do these things first. That's this week's goal. So next week's devlog will be consistent of me working in Unreal Engine on the main menu or going over what I've done. So maybe perhaps a speed lapse of work. A speed lapse? When have I? Whew. Time lapse of me working on the floor environment model. I don't think I'll show my art, but I will work on it. The model and rig. Again, I'll definitely do something low poly. I want to see how a low poly thing looks. Yeah, a voices and sound and maybe going through Unreal's online, like Unreal's actual learning documentation and stuff. And then I'll do the rest of this in theory. <laughs> so then once all that is done, just to give you the viewer an idea of where I'm at, right? And, you know, for me to look back on and say, okay, well, what was my next step? Um, once the Carlos greeting is done, we work within this framework from the main menu and hitting play to the start of the island level. In many ways, this is not the best way to go because it's like writing the first two chapters of a book, right? You don't want to write the first two chapters and keep perfecting the first two chapters. You want to write the whole thing thing, or at least most of it, in my opinion, at least. And But what I'm doing right now is running the first two chapters. There's two reasons why I don't want to go beyond that. One is that I have a reason for sticking in the first two chapters. I think from this house and just to the island level, by filling it in will give me an opportunity to actually finish an idea for the first two chapters. Right now, it's just the outline, right? It'll allow me to constantly iterate my modeling skills and my sketching skills, hopefully. And during that time, it's not like I won't be working on the rest of the chapters. I want to have a nice balance of art coding and narrative. Oh, music's gonna be a whole other thing, but sit down and work on a very simple, straightforward, just spend an hour doing something that shows up in the house. A cup might take me 10, 15 minutes. An entire fridge might take me an hour and a half. During that work block or later in the week, I can also work on learning how to make a character animation move or perhaps working on the main menu widget as well as planning the carnival level or even more of the island level. I don't even know what's gonna happen. And then I also have the demon that is the seashell mechanic. I say demon because while it's in my head, I have no idea how to code it. So yeah, I think I can actually finally say that this is a devlog now. I'm actually working on the game. We're officially no longer a learning log on devlog 10. We're a development log. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of kind of wacky, dude. I'll try to get stuff done on Saturday and Sunday. We'll see, but yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure out my own scheduling later. Uh, for this week on the whiteboard, we have uh, one is name plus purpose equals focus. If I have a purpose for doing something, I also need to label it with a name and then I can focus on it. I've always had this idea of, oh, I need a purpose to you know keep running, but I need a name. What is, what is the thing that I'm working toward? But you know, you can't focus on something until you label it. Or so I've found it's much easier to, you know, oh my God, I have have a whole assignment to do, break it down into parts, label each part, and it becomes much easier to focus on. And then the other thing is how am I defining success? So right now I'm defining success for Seashell, the prototype, as just this base skeleton. No more expectations for myself. If I hit the mark, great. If I don't, that kind of sucks. <laughs> but I feel like I have a good direction. If I sat down right now to work on something, I have like five potential things to work on, which is a really good feeling. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have nothing in the comments for these few videos, but the Oink Discord has been popping. Uh, I've seen a few people from the videos join. So hope you guys are enjoying the Discord uh, as well as some from some typing videos. But you can find the link to that in the description as always. If you have no idea what Seashell is and you've just found this video, you can find the pitch up here. It's here. It's here. I swear it's here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks so much for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.